Suppose we look at a timeline where zero represents the present and we can look ahead by one month or two months or 12 or 13 months. And now I offer you a choice. You can either choose to accept $100 12 months from now or you can wait an extra month and get $105 instead. Which would you choose if you had to make that choice today? Or suppose I give you a different choice. You can either accept $100 immediately or wait a month and get $105. In both cases, I'm asking whether you would prefer to take the $100 sooner or whether you would prefer to wait a month for the extra $5. And if you're the kind of person who chooses to wait in both cases, or if you're the kind of person who chooses not to wait in both cases, we're going to say that your choices exhibit what we call time consistency. Standard economic theory about how we make choices related to the future predicts such time consistency. It does not predict whether we choose to wait or not wait. That's a question related to your level of patience and how patient a person you are is just a characteristic of who you are. Patient people will choose to wait, so they're going to choose the $105 in both cases. Impatient people will choose not to wait, so they'll choose the $100 in both cases but they'll be consistent over time in the kinds of choices they make. Psychologists, however, have done experiments where some people don't exhibit that time consistency. When asked to make this choice, they choose to wait and take the $105 13 months from now. But when asked to make this choice, they choose not to wait and they take the $100 immediately. That's a case where choices are time inconsistent. And it suggests that people who make these time inconsistent choices have self-control problems. When they plan for the future, they plan to wait. But when the future is the present, they can't seem to wait. So they can't control their choices. They make a plan for the future, but they, then they can't execute on that plan. These kinds of self-control problems are one of the subjects that behavioral economics deals with where behavioral economics is the intersection of economics and psychology. But before we get to that, we have to be sure that we really understand what the standard economic framework says about how we make decisions about the future. And the key thing to understand is discounting. We discount the future. So discounting the future means that a dollar in the future is worth less than a dollar to us today. So a dollar a year from now is worth delta dollars, where delta is less than one, today. In other words, if I'm going to ask you how much are you willing to pay to get a one dollar one year from now? You're going to be willing to pay less than a dollar for that. And how much less you're willing to pay depends on how patient you are. If your delta is close to one, then you're a pretty patient person. You don't discount the future very much. But if your delta is far below one, then you're an impatient person. You're discounting the future by a lot. So the patient person who chooses $105 each time has a high delta, a delta that's close to 1. They don't discount the future very much, and so they're able to wait. Whereas impatient people have a low delta, they discount the future a lot, so they're not willing to wait as much for future benefits. So if we put another timeline down, so let's start with um, time zero. And this time let's talk in terms of years. So we look one year ahead and we look two years ahead. So we're thinking about a timeline with years. If I ask you what's a dollar worth to you today, 
The answer is simple. That dollar is simply worth a dollar. But if I ask you, what's a dollar a year from now worth to you? That dollar is worth only delta. You're discounting that dollar. And how much you discount it depends on how patient you are. That determines the value of that delta. Now, if we look two years ahead, we have to discount again. So a dollar two years from now is worth delta times delta, so delta squared. Suppose your delta is 0.9. That means that a dollar a year from now is worth only 90 cents to you today. And a dollar two years from now is worth 0.9 times 0.9, which is 0.81, or only 81 cents to you today. The further the dollar goes into the future, the less valuable it is to you today. That's what discounting the future means. Now let's see what that means for choices we make about the future. Suppose that we have another timeline. Again, we're going to look at years. So the present, one year from now, and two years from now. And I'm asking you today, in the present, whether you'd be willing to make an investment one year from now that'll pay off two years from now. That investment is going to cost you C, C dollars, one year from now. But it's going to give you a benefit of B two years from now. So I'm going to ask you, are you willing to make that kind of an investment? And I'm going to figure out what rule are you going to use to determine whether you're willing to make that investment. You're currently sitting in the present. So when you're thinking a year ahead about what that cost means to you, you have to discount it because it lies one year ahead. The present discounted value of that cost a year from now is delta C. C discounted by one year. What's the present discounted value of the benefit two years from now? Well, since it lies two years in the future, we have to discount it by delta squared. So the benefit, the present discounted value of the benefit is delta squared times B. You're going to willi be willing to m plan to make that investment as long as delta C is less than delta squared B, as long as the present discounted value of the cost is less than the present discounted value of the benefit. So you're going to at time zero, in other words, in the present, you plan to make the investment if this inequality holds. But of course, we've got a delta on both sides, which we could cancel. So we could divide through by delta. And then we get the rule that once we cancel this delta, that just C. Once we divide by delta here, we get rid of the exponent. So that's just delta B. So this rule is the same as that. So you're going to choose to make the investment so long as C is less than delta B. Now fast forward by a year. So at time one, we're going to ask, what's the rule you're going to use to determine whether to actually make the investment when the time comes? So at time one, you make the investment if what rule is satisfied? Well, when time one rolls around and becomes the present, we no longer have to discount the cost because the cost is now immediate. So the cost is immediate and we want that cost to be less than the present discounted value of the benefit. But now the benefit only lies one year in the future. One year in the future we need to discount by delta so the present discounted value of the benefit is delta B. So we're going to make the investment as long as this condition holds. And notice that that condition is exactly the same condition we used to determine whether to plan to make the investment one year from now when we set at the original present. 
In other words, the choice rule that we use to determine whether to make the investment is time consistent. When we think about making a plan for the future, we use the same rule as the one that we use when the time comes to execute the plan. And as a result, our behavior will be time consistent. Patient people are more likely to make the investment because they have a higher delta, and so this side will be higher, so costs can be higher to justify an investment. Inpatient people have a lower delta, so they are less likely to make the investment. But regardless of whether you're patient or inpatient, you choose the same rule to determine whether to plan to make the investment and whether to make the investment when the time comes.